for today's board recap podcast. We're back in action. David Smith, thanks for being here today. So absolutely had another school board meeting last night. So we're just going to jump right in and go through this because I know we certainly want to spend a couple of moments talking about our opening plan. So you want to just take us from the top? Yes. As uh, we often have in the summer, uh, it is uh, one of our more traditional board meetings. So let's just, as you said, jump right in. Uh, I think hopefully the public's pretty accustomed to going to board docs and by doing that through the EVSC homepage to about us, to uh, board school trustees, and then clicking on board docs. Then once you're there, it will open up and then you simply click on the date that you'd like to review, click on the agenda and it will pull up the agenda. Then on the left hand side, you simply click on the topic or the the category, the item that you're interested in. So let's start with consent items and start with item 2.02, the allowance of payments uh, for the past two weeks, $11.5 million, which uh, once again is right in line with what we have seen. Going on then to the consideration to approve the resolution for special education placements outside the corporation, the Indiana Department of Education does require annual approval of a resolution that would allow the superintendent the authority to sign agreements for alternative as well as private residential school placements in place of the board. So the board did approve that last night. Going ahead to 2.04. Uh, This is only the second time since 2008 that we have increased the legal contract that we have had in place with Zemer, Stamen, Weitzel, and Shoulders. And actually, Pat Shoulders has been a valuable member of the EVSC team for 30 years. Are we lucky to have him and his expertise or what? Really incredible knowledge base. You know, we really are. Uh, And it's not only Pat, it's his entire firm, and he's known as as a dean among all of the attorneys uh, in EVSC that work with schools to make certain that uh, everything is as good as it possibly mm-hmm. could be. So certainly value his advice and his guidance uh, for the last 33 years and look to maybe 33 more, but certainly <laughs> several more. As many years as we can get, hopefully. That's right. But certainly do appreciate Pat and his firm for their service. Next item, 2.05, consideration to approve grant proposal. This is uh, the Indian Youth Apprenticeship Accelerator Partnership with Ascend Indiana. EVSC was one of just a handful of partnerships that were announced recently. Uh, And because of being on that list, now we are eligible to apply for a $150,000 planning grant to put those partnerships in place. Uh, So we're very excited to be able to actually provide our students with apprenticeships so they will be paid during that apprenticeship. They'll work with a local company and they'll also be able to receive some industry certifications as they are doing that. And oftentimes um, we have phenomenal companies in Evansville and in the Evansville community. And oftentimes those companies will then pay for uh, their employees' college. So uh, we're very excited about this at the very beginning stages. I think this is once again a byproduct of our opt-in initiative where we're, we are uniting students with their opportunities that are present for them in this community, be it college, career, or military. I mean, really, it's just about making sure our students are successful when they leave EVSC. Absolutely. The next Item 2.06, consideration approved resolution to request uh, House and Road Act 10, 000, or 10,003 flexibility waiver. Um, that basically is a provision that is provided in uh, state statute that will allow us certain uh, flexibility um, in the event that we need it. It could be related to pandemic. It could be related to other issues that uh, come up. I know that there is uh, some consideration about us applying for this with the dyslexia law that was passed in April, and there's a very short timeline for implementation. We just want to make certain that we are able to select the best vendor, the best assessment for that, and then have ample time to train our teachers so that they feel comfortable about utilizing that tool and so that our students are in the best place to succeed. Uh, So if we do approach the State Board of Education for a waiver with a dyslexia provision, then we would uh, continue to use what we've had in previous years as we take uh, time to analyze the new vendors that are out there so that we put forward the best solution for our students. Then item 2.07, those members, those patrons that view these podcasts often, uh, we've seen an STAA 
request before this that's the school technology advancement account that can be utilized for the purchase of technology so if we are granted uh, the funds for this then we would continue forward at a more accelerated rate to install pr new Promethean boards in our K-6 classrooms. And you know I just realized Dr. Smith as we're wrapping up consent items before we move on to personnel, we skipped over good news. I just wanted to lift those highlights because we always Absolutely. have so much to celebrate. Last night, we did um, recognize the fact that one of our teachers at Harrison High School, a foreign language teacher by the name of Jennifer Epperson, was named the American Association of Teachers of Spanish and Portuguese Teacher of the Year. So certainly very quite an honor. happy yes. for her, a very nice honor for her, as well as Harrison High School. And then we had three students this year, uh, and I know as a former high school teacher, you definitely can appreciate this, but who were named National Merit Finalists, which is incredible, that accomplishment. Very, very elite group out of the millions of students that begin that process. I think it's 0.4% uh, in the nation that actually received that distinction, yes. and we had three of them. Uh, Ethan Higgs graduated from Wrights High School. He's on his way to Carnegie Mellon. Uh, University in Pittsburgh, and then Jackson Swingle. Jackson is on his way to Purdue. He just graduated from Central High School. And Reese Perry, who is a proud graduate of Bossy High School, and he is on his way to the University of South Florida. So congratulations to all three yes. of them. Thank you so much for mentioning that. We are very, very proud of you, and we are very excited to what you all do in your future and how you can give back to the, your community. So definitely. congratulations and good luck. Yes, definitely. Personnel recommendations, as always, you can check yeah, that out. Yeah, you certainly can click on that and, and check um, the personal recommendations. And if you don't mind, I'll deviate a little bit from the sure. standard procedure in this, then go into the information items. All four of these information items, if you're a frequent viewer of the podcast, you will recognize these because every month we do put in uh, under information items uh, or financial reviews for the previous month and then the comparative analysis for uh, – previous years. And I wanted to do that because I'd like to spend the bulk of this time then going back to item 4.01 under core curriculum and student development, uh, really talking about our school opening plan. And I'll, if you don't mind, I'll just turn that over to you because you sure. did a great job of presenting this information to our public last night. Well, we'll go through this and certainly chime in. So first of all, to find this, you can go to the EBSC website, which is ebscschools.com. Uh, it is a banner at the top of the page, along with several other things uh, that are going on. There's also a, a quick link button on the left that you can click on. So you're looking at our homepage now. But once you click on that, that will take you to the opening plan. Besides being on the district website, it's on all the school websites as well. So if your child goes to a certain school and you're more comfortable going to their website, you can do that also. But what we told the board last night, Dr. Smith, was we have to follow certain requirements, one of which is ESSER, which deals with federal COVID relief funding. And one of their requirements is this has to be posted by this Thursday. So we absolutely have to hit the deadline of June 24th. It may be a bit early to put some of this out, but we have that deadline. So we're just going to operate as we have the entire time. And that is, as we have information, we're going to share it. So it is now posted live. So we've certainly met the deadline. Um, you can take a look at that now. We'll put that up on the screen. But the way it's organized, we have a series of buttons over on the right um, that will break it down to, into the different areas and the different categories, as you can see. But this is posted now, but as you'll read, and I won't certainly read it to people, it makes it very clear in several sections throughout. We're going to add to this information as we have more information, as we know more, as we continue to follow best practice guidance from all of our partners, local health officials, state health officials. So what you see now, certainly you may see more information as you check back, and we're always going to keep the posted and updated date on there so you know exactly when it was updated. But I want to call attention to a couple of buttons here. First of all, the very last button, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, is opening plan feedback. We're going to monitor that. So anybody that has any feedback, they can click there. And we've already had some responses from we have. last night and to when we were recording this podcast. So that that is great. Yeah. And we said last night we're going to continue to monitor that uh, feedback all throughout the summer. I mean, that's why we kept it live on there. So we definitely appreciate our stakeholders' feedback on that. Um, I'll just click on a couple here just to call them out. So 
if you want to click on vaccinations for school communities, um, when you do that, just like with all of them, it's going to show you information uh, as it's categorized. So again, this is hopefully a user-friendly website for all of our parents, community partners, students that want to check this out. Also, if, if the federal government, when they're monitoring to make sure we're meeting the timelines, they'll be able to see exactly how it's organized as well. But call attention to the first sentence there. I know we've been asked this question. The EVSC will not require COVID-19 vaccinations, but we will continue to collaborate with the local health department to make sure families and employees know how to access the vaccine. Yeah, and if I could, I think, you know, it's very important that the public understand that this resource for them exists. Uh, yes. I've heard some really interesting and bizarre things. One of the things, and uh, I'm just kind of left to wonder, <laughs> Someone said, so we understand that you're going to take kids that are vaccinated and put them in one part of the school and kids that are not vaccinated and put them in another part of the school. True or like, false? I, I, I'm, I'm somewhat down, dumbfounded. Why, how, how would that even get out right. there? So you don't have to question things. You can, you, or no, I ask you to question things, but you don't have to wonder. You don't have right. to listen to what somebody else says. You can go straight to the source. Either call us or you can go straight to the opening plan, click on vaccinations, and it's very clear. So the short answer is no, we would not separate kids out. Right. They've been vaccinating kids that hadn't been vaccinated. Let's click on the mask uh, button, if you would. You know, one of the things I think you did a great job of, of sharing this, but in terms of timeliness, I would have preferred for this to have been released sometime in early July once we would have had a clearer picture. Right. But we also want to be models of how you should <laughs> do things. And if there is an expectation or requirement from this, uh, from ESSER, then we will certainly meet that requirement. But um, I will give you one certainty this plan will change. So continue, please, to go back to this. But it clearly says here in the second paragraph, as EVSC awaits additional guidance, the following information will pertain. So we are awaiting additional guidance. Uh, I think all of our public knows, even though there are some people that want to tell them differently, but the governor's executive order, I think is executive order 15, requires individuals that in any school facility and school ground that masks are required unless you can meet the mitigation strategy of six feet apart. So we don't have a choice on that. Um, but that also expires June the 30th. Mm -hmm. July 1st, then, their schools have additional discretion. But I want to reiterate, we also have to follow the requirements of the CDC. So I hope that this helps inform the public. If you have questions, I would encourage you to look at this resource and also check back often. Uh, when you go back to the reop or the opening plan, it is right there in bold, posted on 6-21-2021 and last updated since it was originally posted on 621, that was also when it was last updated. But you can go back if you want to just jot down the date of the last update when you've looked at it. Uh, that might be beneficial for you too. So then you can always, oh, I see something's been updated because it's a later date. And, and as we said last night, we decided to make this in a website format so that we could really expand on the information. We could have made it a much shorter, more concise document and that would have maybe checked the box as far as meeting criteria of ESSER, but that's not what we're about. We want to make sure, just as we have this entire pandemic, everything that we know we want to put out there so that there's no secrets, uh, so that people don't have to wonder. So as you said, it's here now, but it will change because one of the blessings has been truly for us that wonderful collaboration we have with the local Vandenberg County Health Department as far as our reliance on input from the State Department of Health, CDC. We have individuals who are monitoring that extremely closely. So as we continue to gather their feedback, we'll be able to put more uh, in concrete, if you would, what it's going to look like for this coming school year. And, and the, the mass category is a great example of that. Right. So I would just... Once again, reiterate, and I appreciate individuals that stopping and say, hey, we're grateful that schools were open each and every day. Just once again, want to make certain everybody understands that the school board and the, the individuals that made the decisions that allowed EVSC to be the largest school district in the entire Midwest, not just in Indiana, 
but the entire Midwest to be open each and every day for in-person instruction, still making decisions based upon the same kinds of processes and protocols we did before. Healthcare officials, what is required, continue to look at everything and make decisions that make the most sense. And as we said last night, our hope is that we can open in as normal a fashion as possible. Absolutely. But that, uh, and that's certainly our hope uh, and our prayer, but certainly we want to make sure we continue to follow that guidance because at the end of the day, we're going to keep our kids safe and healthy and our employees as well. And that's what we've been doing this entire time. That is our bottom line. So again, yeah, this information's there. Again, you can go to the EVSC website, you can go to school websites. It's called the 2021 22 Opening Plan. And keep checking back on that. Look at all those categories. See when updates are made. If you have any feedback, click on that last button, and we will continue to monitor that. But we certainly hope this helps our community to know where we stand. Absolutely. And I think, um, unless you have anything else to share, that pretty much sums up last night's board meeting. Uh, I think that's a great recap. Once again, we have town halls from 5 to 525 preceding our board meetings. Next board meeting is July the 13th and can always listen to us on WPSR. I think that's 90.7 on your FM dial. I think you're exactly right. So once again, Dr. Smith, thanks for joining us. We'll do another board recap following the next board meeting. Thanks, everybody.